Hi, I'm Harry, and I'm doing a PhD in soils, which often raises a few eyebrows, followed by the question of why you want to dedicate four years of your life to studying dirt. Well, soils may be largely ignored by the general public, but over 90% of our food comes from soils. They store and cycle water, they hold a quarter of the world's biodiversity, and all of life's major ingredients pass through soil, such as carbon, phosphorus, and nitrogen. They act as both a sink and a source of greenhouse gases, and a soil's health is paramount to delivering several of the UN's sustainable development goals, including no hunger, no poverty, life on land, climate action, and clean water and sanitation. Specifically, I'm looking at the greenhouse gas nitrous oxide, which is often left off the list when discussing greenhouse gases. However, it's 300 times more potent than carbon dioxide. There are two key factors that I'm investigating. The first factor is the amount of oxygen in the soil, which is really tied to the amount of water within the soil. And the second factor is how the land has been managed. For example, is it fertilized and what type of vegetation is grown? So although this is a very noisy lab, this specialist incubation equipment allows us to measure nitrogen gas in all its different forms. So let's look at this first factor, which is about oxygen or water within the soil. So the microbes that produce nitrous oxide do so under varying different oxygen concentrations and therefore water levels. For example, if the soil is waterlogged, then there's going to be less oxygen available. And some microbes respond to this by using nitrogen compounds to breathe. As a byproduct, nitrous oxide is produced. And this type of specialist equipment allows us to measure such gases. Water in the soil over longer periods of time can affect the microbial makeup. For example, if there's a drought, some microbes will die, while others will thrive in their place. Scientists have actually noted that if the soil has been dry for a long period of time and then it's re-wetted, there can be a huge spike in emissions and it isn't fully understood why this is the case. Unlike other specialist laboratory equipment, these Lyco chambers allow us to measure nitrous oxide emissions in the field. The second factor is the historic management of the site, so how the soil has been looked after. Now this encompasses a broad range of different practices that would affect emissions. Although fertiliser management and water management are probably the most important. Since the 60s, we've seen an incredible evolution in farming, roughly tripling the yields of wheat, corn and rice. Amongst other things, these changes have been driven by a substantial increase in the amount of nitrogen inorganic fertiliser. Therefore, some ecosystems have become saturated with nitrogen and consequently, there's been a significant increase in nitrous oxide emissions. So part of my research involves analysing different farming practices and trying to understand their impact on nitrogen cycling within the soil. All in all, we have to feed over 9 billion people by 2050. By some estimates, that means doubling food production levels under the ever-pressing impacts of climate change and biodiversity loss. So this means we need to develop sustainable agricultural solutions that don't exacerbate these issues any further. My research plays a small part in trying to understand what these solutions might look like in terms of minimising nitrous oxide emissions.